Welcome everyone to the second video in this series where we are testing the M2 Pro Mac Mini brand new hot off the shelf from Apple against the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now in my previous video, which I'll link in the description below, we tested the M1 Max Mac Studio, the base M1 Max against the M2 Pro Mac Mini and we got some interesting results. Mostly what we expected, the Mac Studio was faster than the M2 Pro Mac Mini, but not in one of the longer videos that I exported. I really recommend checking out that video to see some of the interesting results. So I want to see what this M1 Pro, the base configuration of the M1 Pro with 32 gigabytes of unified memory and a one terabyte internal SSD can do against the M2 Pro Mac Mini. In exporting three videos, one a YouTube short, one, a YouTube vlog that's about 11 minutes long, and then a longer YouTube tutorial video that's about 16 minutes long. And that was something that was very important to me. I wanted to export videos that I've actually made for my channel in Final Cut Pro, so you can know what to expect if you already have an M1 Pro MacBook Pro and you're looking to add maybe an M2 Pro Mac Mini to your Mac arsenal. Now, all three of these videos were shot in 4K. The YouTube short was shot in 4K on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. The YouTube vlog was shot with my Canon EOS R, which I'm filming with now in 4K 8-bit H.264. And then my tutorial was shot in 4K in 10-bit XF AVC from my Canon C300 Mark II. So we have a nice range of cameras that you might be using. And then you can see what to expect with export times between the M1 Pro MacBook Pro and the M2 Pro Mac Mini. So our first test here on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, I've got my YouTube short all ready to go. And I'm gonna export this in two ways. I'm gonna export it to H.264 and I'm also gonna do a ProRes 422 export. So let's get started with that H.264 MP4 export. All right, here we go. And... Now the M2 Pro Mac Mini exported this YouTube short in one minute and seven seconds. So I'm expecting the M1 Pro MacBook Pro to export it in maybe a minute 10, a minute 12 seconds, somewhere in that range. Not too much slower, uh, but you know, a little bit of an improvement with the M2 Pro Mac Mini over the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. All right, so we're already off to an interesting start. This 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro exported my 58 second long 4K uh, YouTube short to H.264 in. So one minute and four seconds, and the M2 Pro Mac Mini did it in one minute, seven seconds. So that's curious. Okay, well, let's export it in ProRes and see what happens there. And here we go. Done. Okay, now uh, this, is, this is a little bit more what I'd expect. So the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro exported the same YouTube short to ProRes 422 in in 22.8 seconds. So the M2 Pro Mac Mini did the same export in 20.4 seconds. So not a huge improvement from the M1 Pro to the M2 Pro in that test. Now we're gonna move on to my vlog video, which is about 11 minutes long. And again, 4K footage from my Canon EOS R shot on H.264, it's 8-bit. So let's export this video and see what happens. And go. So the M2 Pro Mac Mini exported this vlog video to H.264 in 12 minutes, 40 seconds. So I'm expecting the M1 Pro MacBook Pro to export this video somewhere in the range of 13 or maybe 14 minutes. It's gonna be neck and neck, y'all. 87%. Oh boy. All right, all right. Now, this is more along the lines of what I'm expecting. All right, so the M1 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro exported my vlog video. It's 11 minutes long, all that fun stuff. In 12 minutes and 59 seconds, just under 13 minutes. And of course, the M2 Pro Mac Mini did it in 12 minutes and 40 seconds. So a little bit faster for the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And then let's do the... Uh, I don't know which trackpads to use. And we're gonna export this to ProRes 422. So the M2 Pro Mac Mini exported this exact same video, exact same timeline, no render files, no other applications open, just like on this computer, it did it all. The vlog to ProRes in five minutes and 28 seconds. Let's see how much slower the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is. All right, here we go, 98. Wow, I was even a little bit slow to trigger this, so that's pretty uh, pretty impressive from the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So the time for it to export my vlog to ProRes was 
5 minutes 32 seconds and I would even put it closer to right at 32 seconds maybe even the high 31 seconds because I was a little slow to hit the stop button on the timer. The M2 Pro Mac Mini exported the same video in 5 minutes and 28 seconds so really only a 4 second difference between the two chips between these two computers. That's that's pretty interesting. All right, so let's conduct our third and final test. We're taking a look at one of my YouTube tutorials. It's 16 minutes long, packed full of 4K Canon C300 Mark II footage, screen recordings, picture in picture effects, all kinds of crazy stuff going on in this edit. So it's gonna be fairly intensive. Just to recap, this video was exported to H.264 on the M2 Pro Mac Mini in 34 minutes and 12 seconds. This is gonna take probably 30 plus minutes. I'm guessing this is gonna come in at maybe 35, 36 minutes to export this video on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. We'll find out. All right, export just finished on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And uh, the export time for this 16 minute long Canon C300 4K tutorial video on my channel took 41 minutes to export. Now, just to compare again and recap, the M2 Pro Mac Mini took 34 minutes and 12 seconds. This one took 41 minutes exactly. So we've got a difference of seven minutes in the export time. So I think that that's, you know, pretty much expected from the M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. I was expecting, like I said earlier, sort of in that maybe 37 to 39 minute range but we're at 41 minutes to export this video. So definitely a pretty marked improvement with the M2 Pro Mac Mini when exporting a 16 minute video with this type of footage, XFAVC from the Canon C300 Mark II. So the last test we need to do, we need to export this timeline to ProRes 422. All right, here we go on the export to ProRes. Let's do this. Now with the M2 Pro Mac Mini, this ProRes export of the same timeline took 18 minutes and 25 seconds. So I'm expecting this to take somewhere around 20 or so minutes. We'll see what the difference is when the export's done. Okay, here we go. 21 minutes and 56 seconds for the ProRes export of the 16 minute tutorial timeline. And again, the M2 Pro Mac Mini did an 18 minutes and 25 seconds. So we are talking about a three and a half minute difference uh, between exports. So you might be thinking, why are you testing the M2 Pro Mac Mini against the M1 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro? They're two completely different computers that are used in two very different ways. Obviously, they both can be used for video editing in Final Cut Pro, but one's a desktop and one's a laptop. How is this going to help us? Well, one way I hope that it helps you is if you're in the market for an M2 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro, you might be able to save a little money by looking at a refurbished M1 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro on Apple's refurbished site. You might say to yourself, maybe I can get by on the used market or the Apple refurbished store and save a few hundred dollars and still get an incredibly powerful computer for what I needed to do, content creation, video editing, that sort of thing, and be able to level up from the Intel machine that you're currently using and very frustrated with. So again, just to sum up, I think that these results are what we expected. And the M2 Pro is a definite improvement over the M1 Pro system on a chip, but it is not a just revolutionary transformative upgrade where it just blows blows away the M1 Pro. Again, if you're thinking about getting into an M2 powered computer, the more compelling argument to do that, in my opinion, is that you get Bluetooth 5.3, HDMI 2.1, and Wi-Fi 6E. Those to me are the more compelling arguments for considering getting into an M2 computer over staying with your M1 computer. But that's what we've got with these real world test results. Three videos of mine that I actually made and are on my channel right now, exported from this computer and the M2 Pro Mac Mini to see what the difference in time was. If you didn't watch my previous video where I put the M1 Max Mac Studio against the M2 Pro Mac Mini in Final Cut Pro, definitely check it out. That's all I've got for this one, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli. Just wanna make sure that you, the heat turns on. <laughs> the heat is on. The heat is on. <laughs>